This is the number one reason why you might not be able to work internationally in your dream country. Hey everyone, this video is geared towards international students and international people who want to work abroad or stay in the country that they are studying in. If you haven't already seen my how to study abroad and to study environmental biology and wildlife biology in another country, click the link above to that video and also I'll have it in the description box. This is part two out of a two part series on international students. Another disclaimer here, I am not an immigration lawyer and so I cannot advise on specific visa requirements or what visa might be best for what country. My advice here depends on whether or not you studied in the country that you're looking to work in. So if you did study in the country that you want to work in, I recommend that you draw on those connections that you made in university and those internships and volunteer work that you did in order to help you get a permanent job or for a company to sponsor a visa for you to stay. Look into post-grad visas. Like I know Canada has a post-graduation visa opportunity for people who did study in their country. It gives them a little bit of time to try to find a job and to try to gain some experience in Canada after university. If you did an internship, approach your internship company and see if they would be willing to go through the visa sponsorship process. You have a much higher chance of your visa being sponsored if you've already been working for the company before and they know you and they really want you to stay on. So getting an internship during university is definitely one of the number one tips I have for international students. Most countries, the student visa allows you to work around part time job salary. So take full advantage of that and get an internship. This is actually how I got my visa sponsored was through a short seasonal job that I had. They were able to sponsor me later on. I also have some more information about visas, international work, and that whole process in my video I'll link to above, which is why I left America when I became a scientist. I talk a lot more about visas and just moving in general in that video. If you are totally new to the country that you want to move to, say you want to move from India to Canada to work as a wildlife biologist. So this is going to be relevant for you. Number one tip, please research what visas you are eligible for because if you don't have a visa you aren't getting a job i'll just leave it at that there's almost no countries where you are going to get a job without a visa unless you are very very highly skilled so you really need to look at what visas are eligible before you waste too much time dreaming about moving to this country this may involve you seeing an immigration lawyer or an immigration assistance program that helps people from your country move abroad if you can't afford that you're gonna have to research on google and try to look into what people have done in similar situations as yourself reach out to other international students for advice and also reach out to your friends who already might live abroad on what they did you might have to have a company prove that they need to hire you over a local person and this is very very hard to do especially if you're just starting out you know if you want to move to America it's a big place and there's a lot of different skills so you might actually have to prove how you singularly are better than everyone else in the country and they have to give you a job uh, that's how, unfortunately how hard it is to get into some countries not every country you have to do this but just be aware that that's what you have to prove for some countries any special skills you have that you don't think anyone else have that's like definitely things that you want to highlight on your resume Consider how hard it is to stay in a country before you move there. Like it might not be a good idea to move to the US if you know you have no chance of staying. Why fall in love with it if you can't stay? So maybe you wanna move to New Zealand or something because they might have a different visa that will actually allow you to stay. So consider that before you choose what country you want to move to. Other things that might be relevant is uh, extended family. Like if your parents have citizenship in one country, even grandparents sometimes can be eligible. I know with some countries, I think don't quote me on this, but I believe like Italy, if you have a grandmother with Italian citizenship, you, there is ways for it to be passed down to you and you can get work authorization. So look into all the family connections you have and people who already live in your family live abroad might be able to sponsor you. Working holiday visas, which are short one, two year visas that are for young people to work abroad. And finally, marriage visas might be relevant in your situation. Next, learn about the market in the place that you wanna move to. So make sure that there are environmental or wildlife jobs available in the country that you wanna move to. Check job postings to see if there's anything available. This is a really, really big tip. 
that I actually find a lot of people ignore and they'll never find a job without this. You have to get your resume reviewed by a native speaker in the language that you're applying in. One of the number one things that gets job applications tossed out right away is poor language skills and poor grammar. Your resume has to be perfect. I would say honestly, even one typo sometimes can get resumes thrown out. It has to be perfect. You're competing with so many hundreds of people that even the littlest reason for them to toss your resume in the trash, they're going to take it. So make sure it gets reviewed by professional service or someone who you know has fluent skills in language you, in the country that you're applying to. Make sure you use strong verbs. So what I mean by that is, for example, one part of my resume is managed all wildlife communications to impacted stakeholders during the environmental impact assessment process. Big words words like managed, developed, all those types of action words are really good to start your resume with. Also make sure your resume all has the same tone, whether you're doing past tense or future tense, just make sure it's consistent throughout the resume. Those are all just little things that kind of perk up your resume a bit. I talk a lot more about resumes and how to find a job in the video I'll link to above. If you don't have much experience, highlight anything that could be relevant. That's school projects, coursework, volunteer work, anything you think might show why you are a good fit for the job. Another tip I have for environmental scientists and biologists, learn about the local environment that you are going to be working in. And that's one thing that makes it hard to find work as a biologist in another country because so many things are dependent on where you live. For example, if you did your PhD research studying one specific type of moss in India and now you want to move to Austria and be a moss expert, good luck because it's all going to be totally different. So you really want to make sure you study and research the area you're going to live in and make sure that you know the local flora and fauna so that you kind of hit the ground running once you start the job. Hey guys, I'm back in the evening because my video cut off earlier. To continue, explain the situation that you're in as far as moving in your visa situation in the cover letters that you write for your job applications. Otherwise, someone with an address in India that's applying for a job like in Canada is their applications honestly going to get tossed because they're gonna think they just messed up and applied to the wrong place so make sure you explain why you're moving when you're moving and how you're moving in your cover letter briefly when you have a short-term visa or a working holiday look into seasonal positions those can be really common in wildlife biology and environmental biology so they could be a really good fit if you are just here temporarily prep for the interview in in the local language and hopefully with someone who is fluent in the language so they can help you improve and learn and also answer some common interview questions for the country that you're in. Also figure out the etiquette of how you interview in a different country. Even just a greeting the interviewer could be different depending where you are. So you can also confirm that they do Skype calls. I know when I got my job I have currently now, I actually interviewed when I was in Australia and Skype does offer a monthly charge where you can actually get a local phone number. So if you're applying for a job in the US, you can actually get a US phone number and that looks much better in your application. Leave a comment down below and let me know what country is your dream to move to and what kind of job you want to do. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.